All right, what is going on, Patriot Drive Nation, and welcome back to the podcast. This is Jason Cole. Today, we're going to be talking about a hot topic, five or so receivers that we think the Patriots could trade for or should be looking at to trade for. So make sure you stay tuned to that. Like and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you get a notification whenever we go live or upload a new video. Stay tuned, and we'll come right back with it. All right, so for our first one right here, we're going to throw it over to Cole. This is uh, a different variation. We're going to start at number five. We're going to work our way down to number one, um, but we have a little different um, thought process at who we would target at number five. So, Cole, who would you think is the fifth best wide receiver to possibly trade for? Yeah, this is a guy that I, I know I'm a little bit higher on than you. I've been a fan of his game for a while, and a lot of the times you hear wide receivers when they're saying who they study, it's Keenan Allen for the Chargers. I mean, He's one of the best route runners in the league. He plays a lot of slot. Uh, I think you mentioned that he took the third or fourth most snaps out of the slot. Um, he's He's been extremely productive. His one concern has been his health. This past year, he missed seven games, still put up 752 yards and four touchdowns. But before that, in 2021, he had 1,100 yards, six touchdowns, 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns, uh, 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, 1,200 yards, six touchdowns, 1,400 yards, six touchdowns in 2017. So he's been extremely productive. He's been extremely consistent. Like I said, just crisp route runner, knows how to get open. Maybe not the best after the catch in the NFL, but he's one of the best separators, one of the best guys at getting off the line of scrimmage, getting separation early, and opening up uh, a safety outlet for his quarterback. So I think Keenan Allen would be a great veteran guy to add to this locker room along with guys like DeAndre, Ho uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, Devontae Parker, and uh, Tyquan Thornton, Kendrick Bourne, those type of guys. He's a different type of receiver than them, and he just he gets open so quickly. Um, and I think he could he could definitely help teach these guys different techniques of how to get off the line quickly. And if we end up drafting a receiver, just another guy in, in the room who really knows how to – he's a professional at getting open. I mean, that's just what he does. He's, he's just a professional route runner, and uh, Keenan, I think, would be a great addition to this team. Yeah, and, and New England's always thrived with a true slot guy like a Keenan Allen that can get opens, mystery liable. I'm not against the idea. I prefer Brandon Ayuk over him. He's going to be 24 years old. I think that he's one of the best yard after the catch guy. He um, averages, he's a, he had the 15th most um, yards per reception this year at 13 and a half, um, went for over 1,100 yards and eight touchdowns, and he forced the fifth most tackles at 16 um, at the wide receiver position. So, you're talking about a guy that New England really hasn't had that one is very good at getting hit, getting the ball in space and making people miss and creating yard yards after the catch. Now that hasn't been New England's game plan. You mentioned it before we started. This is that we've had Johnny Smith. We've had guys that can do that and we haven't utilized them. So can Bill O'Brien get that out of a guy? I would hope so. But I think that Brandon Ayuk is a guy that is so versatile and so dynamic that he can do a lot of different things for this offense. And yeah, he might not be a number one receiver. He might be thriving a lot because of Devo Samuel and George Kittle, but I love his game. I love how um, elusive he is, what he does with the ball in his hands and really how um, easy it is for teams just to put a game plan together for him and let him do his thing. It's very simple. Um, and Keenan Allen, you know, is one of those guys that is going to create a ton of separation before the catch, but he's not really going to shake you after he's going to be Mr. Reliable. Um, so it, for me, it's just a preference on we've had a Keenan Allen guy. Do we just go get an IU guy that can do something that we haven't seen the Patriots um, do right here? So that that's kind of my take on the IU thing. One, he's younger, a little bit more versatile with the ball in his hands. It, it's just a, a preference of what you'd like with your receiver, in my opinion. Yeah, and I mean, that's certainly one of the more appealing things about IU is his run after the catch ability. And the second thing is his age, along with his contract. He's 24 years old, $4 million cap hit next season. Keenan Allen's 30 years old with a $22 million cap hit. The Chargers are $20 million over the cap. They need to create cap space somehow. They, they can do it other ways, but this would be the quickest and easiest way for them to do that. They just signed uh, Mike Williams to an extension last season. They have Austin Eckler. They have some talent there and some younger guys who filled in when Keenan Allen was down, filled in when Mike Williams was down. They have talent on that offense and they have Justin Herbert who they're going to have to pay as well. So I don't know how realistic the Keenan Allen thing is. I know they're going to want to keep that offense together because that's something that really obviously helps their team out. Uh, having, having an explosive offense like that with multiple players, especially when you have Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, two guys who are kind of injury prone a little bit. It's important to have 
depth there and uh, multiple guys who can do it to stay in the playoff race, especially in that division that they're in with the Chiefs and um, and the Broncos and Raiders. So Ayuk, I do like, I, I just, I don't think we've had a guy like Keenan Allen in, in a while. I, I just, I, I'm higher on him than you clearly, just his route running ability. I think the ability to get open in the NFL is hard, especially when you're going up against number one corners. That's something that Brandon Ayuk does not do very often. That's something that Keenan Allen does do quite often. And um, I'm a big fan of his game. Yeah. So now we agree on all of these top four. So let's jump into the number fourth guy right here. We're going to throw in Jerry Judy, Mac Jones's college teammate. They never played together on the field um, for an extended period of time, but they were roommates at the University of Alabama. Good friendship. They've talked about how much they enjoyed their time with each other. So you talk about another guy that's known for yards after the catch. He had the fourth most yards uh, after the catch per reception this year, 6.1. The highest guy on New England, Jacoby Myers. He averaged 3.6 yards per um, yards after um, the catch per reception. So you're talking about almost doubling that production from Jerry Judy. He had 987 yards, six touchdowns this year get on an offense that should have been a lot better and had a lot more expectations than what they achieved with uh, Russell Wilson. Now, maybe they want to keep him together now because Sean Payton's there. They're not looking to trade him. So that's something that you'll have to um, explore. But we've seen the connections between college teammates um, to uh, Jalen Waddle, um, Jamar Chase, and um, Joe Burrow. So even though they didn't play together on the field, they have that connection. They have that chemistry. It, it's something to think about. Plus, um, Bill O'Brien coming from Alabama, he didn't coach either of these guys, but it's all the same down there. You know, you talk about the Patriot system, the Alabama system's the same, right? There's going to be a lot of things that are going to be relatively similar to Mac Jones, Jerry Judy, Bill O'Brien coming from Alabama and then being in the Patriots organization. So I'm a big Jerry Judy guy. I think that he's another young talent that really hasn't lived up to his first round hype but he could continue to develop and could get to that point. It's just a matter of if Denver wants to get rid of him now with Sean Payton and Russell Wilson and how many picks they've invested into winning now. Yeah, exactly. That's the one thing that kind of makes me question his availability as well as he's 23 years old, $5 million cap hit, somewhat cost-controlled player. You could say still on his rookie deal his last year of it. Like you said, they're in win now mode. They just traded a million picks for Sean Payton and, and Russell Wilson. They need to win games this year and be competitive this year because when you trade that many picks, you're not playing for the future. You're pl playing for the current. You're playing for the present right now. Uh, so getting rid of a guy like Jerry Judy, I don't think would be beneficial for them, but it certainly would be, would be beneficial for, I think, him and us as well. I think a change of scenery would be nice for him. I'm sure he'll do a lot better in Sean Payton in a Sean Payton coached offense with Russell Wilson. I'm sure he's going to have a bounce back year, but I think he would be great in this Patriots system. Um, he's had his own injury concerns a little bit. He's had some ups and downs with a couple different things. I played 15 games this year, so only missed a couple games, but he also got hurt in a couple of the other ones. So I think he kind of really missed like three or four. Uh, and then 10 games he played in 2021. He played all 16 in 2020, which was good, but um, a, a thousand yard receiver almost last year, uh, 500 yards in 10 games in 2021, 850 in 2020. Uh, he has nine total career touchdowns, six of them coming this year. So Jerry Duge is a talented receiver. Another guy who's a good route runner, uh, pretty good separator. Um, I think just a, another young player that you could add to this team that has a lot of room to grow. Like you said, first round pick. Those don't grow on trees, first round wide receivers and, and especially talented ones. And usually they're not available. We saw AJ Brown become available. Obviously, he had a different amount of production than a guy like Jerry Judy has had. He's proved himself more than Judy, but I don't see why Jerry Judy can't develop into a, a top 10 receiver in the NFL. He's got all the talent in the world to do it. He just hasn't had the right situation and he just hasn't got off to the best start of his career, but he's certainly got all the talent in the world. But uh, moving on to number three, a guy who I think may become a little more available based off the news we just heard the other day about Brady retiring, and that's Mike Evans. Another guy who is in a situation where maybe they're not, in win now mode tom brady just left if they trade for like a Derek carr or something like that jimmy g they sign him maybe they transition to that type of mode but they're they are way over the cap i think they're like 30 40 million dollars over the cap right now mike evans is a guy who is getting a little older he's 29 years old and is 24 million dollars to the cap this next season so he also has a couple void years on that deal where i think he'll be getting paid extra money He's a good receiver, though. I mean, he's been extremely consistent throughout basically his entire career, uh, just as far as yardage and, and touchdowns go. He's been a thousand yard receiver every single year since 2014, when, uh, his first season. And he's had 
that that first year he had 12 touchdowns, three, 12, five, eight, eight, 13, 14, and then six this year, obviously in a down year with the Bucks offense, but he's an extremely productive outside big receiver who has speed separation ability. And he also is pretty good after the catch. He's a bigger guy who can kind of maneuver after the catch pretty well, which is impressive for, for a guy, his size and his, his ability to go pinpoint the football and, and go and get it is, is impressive. We saw Brady throw it up to him. And he's made some some really good, tough catches. So um, Mike Evans, I think, would be a huge addition to this team. I guess it kind of depends what type of receiver you're looking for. With a guy like Devontae Parker, that's they're kind of comparable. So I almost wish that maybe we could get a Mike Evans and have a guy like Jacoby back and maybe not a Devontae. Because then if you got a Mike Evans to pair with a Jacoby Myers, I think those are kind of complementary players that can play two different positions at the wide receiver spot on your offense. And, Real quick, guys, we'd like to thank today's sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. With Underdog's NFL Pick'em, they make it super easy to win big on any given night. They have individual player props or daily fantasy and are legal in 41 of the 50 states. Right now, they are doubling your first deposit up to $100 when you use code PATSDRIVE or use the link in the description. All you have to do is select higher or lower and submit your wager for as low as $1 to win anywhere from 3 times to 20 times your money. You can also compete against thousands in underdog fantasies, daily fantasy tournaments ranging anywhere from football to baseball to basketball. Whatever sport it is, there's a tournament for you. Now with Underdog's Pick'em Insurance, you can still win money even if one of your picks does not hit. So head over to underdogfantasy.com or download the Underdog app. Make sure to use code PATCHDRIVE or use the link in our description to get started today. Yeah, and the three guys that we're going to throw up these or these next three are all kind of grouped in the same boat. Deep, ta- deep down the th- field targets that go up and make contested catches, which is what we wanted to see with Devontae Parker. We saw flashes of it in the last game and in the game against Baltimore. But Mike Evans had the fourth uh, most contested catches this year, 18. The third highest contested catch percentage, 65% of contested catch balls he was coming up with. And the third highest average depth of target at 14 yards. So, Talking about a big, tall, physical receiver that can go up and high point the ball, make plays in the red zone, and runs down the field that New England doesn't really have. Um, he's not a burner. He's not, you know, a Tyree or a, um, um, Tyquan Thornton. Sorry, I keep getting that one mixed up. Tyquan Thornton, where he's running a four-two past you. He's he ran a four-five-three in the combine, but he is physical, good route runner at the top of his routes. He's a veteran. He can stack corners. Um, he can get him to buy on comebacks on those routes. So. It's for me, the age on this one doesn't really matter. I think that he still has good years in front of him. Obviously, until he's not a thousand yard receiver, he's in elite company. I, I mean, what Calvin Johnson? I don't even know if Calvin Johnson did. I know there's been a couple guys that have had um, nine straight 1000 yard seasons um, at receiver, but it's not very many. So this guy's in elite territory and his first, what, six years, he wasn't even playing with good quarterbacks. Yeah, Jameis Winston, but. Yeah. I mean, Jameis Winston was also throwing 30 interceptions a year. So it, it's crazy the production this guy's had, probably the most production out of anyone um, other than maybe the guy that we're going to mention right now, um, which is DeAndre Hopkins. And this is another guy that a lot of people have been talking about for the Patriots. You know, there's rumors that Bill loves him, that he wants to go out and get him. Well, what's it going to be with Bill O'Brien now as the offensive coordinator? We don't know. We'll have to see. But DeAndre Hopkins is the one guy on this list that I think we know for sure is going to get traded this offseason. And Arizona is already looking to move him. This is another guy that has been in the league for so long and been so productive. He was productive with Bill O'Brien. It had a sour ending, but he was so productive. He made um, you know, a name for himself in Houston, one of the most irrelevant franchises in the NFL when him and Bill O'Brien came and kind of turned that thing around. So this year he only played nine games. Um, and he still ended up with 64 catches. Jacoby led the Patriots with 67, and he played six game in, suspension in that as well, I believe. Yeah, and he played in um, uh, five more games than Jacoby did. So again, this guy's playing in five fewer games than our leading receiver right here, and he's almost topping him in yards, and he uh, is three sh- uh, shyer than him in receptions. And a veteran guy that, yeah, he's not you know in his mid 20s like some of the other guys we mentioned, but. He's going to come in. We know what he's going to be, and it's just a matter of how we use him and if Mac and him can get on the same um, page. And I think that both of these guys, Mike Evans and DeAndre Hopkins, could. They could use him down the field. They could use their experience um, at the receiver position and really you know, help Mac make that next jump and make like life easier on the offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien, and the team in general. So 
those two guys are kind of the same for me, but I love both. I would love both of those guys, even though we already have a guy that's supposed to be like that in Devonte Parker. It's, it's just, these guys are their production and what they've done in the NFL is so dr drastically different than what Devonte Parker has. And I mean, it's not bad necessarily to have two guys that can go up and catch the football like that. You see what since he's done with, uh, Jamar Chase and T Higgins. I mean, two bigger receivers, tall, physical, dominant quarters with cornerbacks with speed are usually playing wide receiver, not corner. So you don't see a ton of big, physical, fast corners on teams. You don't see a lot of superstars that are, there's more than one guy. Usually they have a top big corner, but if we had a guy like Mike Evans or a guy like DeAndre Hopkins alongside a guy like Dev Devontae Parker, and we were going up against a, a secondary like ours, where our tallest corner is what, 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and then it goes to like 5'8", that's a mismatch and, and you'll be feasting all day with stuff like that. So just one last thing on Mike Evans, even if he ran a five, uh, four five, I feel like he has long speed. Like yeah, he does. He feels like a guy when you're seeing him run down the field, maybe it's just his size and you don't expect a guy that big to move that fast, but he seems like he's got long speed. And then the, he just, he always catches up to the ball. It seems like it's, it's hard to overthrow him. Uh, and, and like I said, maybe that's his frame along with his, his speed, but Mike Evans is talented. I think DeAndre Hopkins is extremely talented as well. And and I agree with you ha having him at number two here. I think you could interchange Mike Evans and DeAndre Hopkins. I think either one of them would be great. Uh, might come down to price point at that point, but they're about the same age. I think D hop is one year older. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is 30 years old. Mike Evans is 29. So I, I think DeAndre Hopkins would be such a good addition to this offense. Like we just kind of like all the things you just touched on great route runner. He's never been a guy who's had to rely on his speed to get open, which the first thing to go as you age in your career is your speed. So if that's what you're relying on to get open every single time, that might start to fade with, with uh, age. But at 30 years old, his route running is still really, really good. He's pretty solid after the catch. Uh, he just knows how to get open. He is, I mean, if you watch the the Patriots Cardinals game this year, you saw the one handed catch he made that was out of bounds in the back of the end zone. I mean, he's ridiculous. You could have three guys on him and he could still go get the football. DeAndre Hopkins is that good. He is an incredible, phenomenal receiver in the NFL, and he is still absolutely a number one. So I would be ecstatic if we got a guy like DeAndre Hopkins. I think he certainly uh, is one of the best guys that is available right now. He is the best guy that we know for sure is available. Um, so adding DeAndre Hopkins to this wide receiver core would do wonders for uh, our offense, for Mac Jones, for everybody involved in this team. Yeah, it's, I mean, and to your point, Tyquan Thornton ran a 1-5-1 10-yard split. Mike Evans was a 1-5-7, so it's a little difference, but that's still, Tyquan's was in the 85th percentile, Mike Evans was in the 50th percentile. So it still shows you that just that little speed right there, that little quickness, it shows how much long speed Mike Evans has once he gets going he has that speed, um, he, but he's not going to outrun you um, in the short game. So, yeah, but um, let's move it on to our number one target. And a lot goes into this. Um, one, the season he's had this year, what he's done with a good young quarterback. And two, his age, um, his timeline with Mac Jones and how much we think a contract would kind of be for him relative. I think he will demand a lot of money and you're going to have to sign him to a contract kind of like A.J. Brown. Uh, that's going to have to be in the trade deal. But T Higgins, this is a guy that has blown onto the scene. Another big bodied receiver. We saw it this year going against Marcus Jones. Marcus Jones was on him like a glove, but he could not compete with the jump balls right there. And um, he had the fifth most contested catches. So, you know, Mike Evans had the fourth most. He had the fifth most. He had um, just shy of 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns, and the 14th most yards per route ran this year at 13 and a half. So again, another big bodied receiver that can run down the field that, Mac Jones can, you know, throw passes up to and let him go make a play on. And it's a little different than Brandon Ayuk, where you're going to get it to him and let him do something after play. But this is a guy that you can just throw it up to him like you've seen Joe Burrow do sometimes. And 60% of the time, he's going to come down with a catch. and It's going to be a big play. It's going to be in a red zone. It's going to be for a touchdown. It's going to be things like that. So T Higgins might not be the number one for you guys, but him only being 24 and, you know, having the opportunity to trade for him and sign him for four or five more years, kind of like A.J. Brown did, is super intriguing to me because he's still in his prime. Even if you sign him to that four-year deal, he's not even going to be 30 by the time that deal's up. So that, to me, is super enticing, and it's got to be something New England looks at if T. Higgins is looking to be that number one receiver and get paid like a number one receiver. 
Yeah, T. Higgins is a freak. I mean, we saw him. We saw his contested catch ability, his jump ball ability in the AFC Championship. I mean, it was on display for the whole country. He is a freak. And he's certainly going to demand a lot of money. I think the even bigger concern might be what you have to give up to get him. I don't know how inclined Cincinnati is going to be to trade him. If they keep him next year, they're Super Bowl contenders, maybe even Super Bowl favorites, just like they were contenders this year. And, and it came down to a couple calls by the referees and a couple of bad plays by Cincinnati, I think they would have a, a real shot to win the Super Bowl this year. So obviously T Higgins on the last year of his deal next season. So maybe they want to trade him, get draft capital back. They got to pay Joe Burrow. Um, I, I know they're, they're one of their safeties as it Bates, Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates. Yep. He is, uh, this was his last year of his deal. They got a couple other guys they need to pay. Um, and obviously Joe Burrow is going to be the big expense out of all of that. But Cincinnati's cheap. Will they go? and pay this guy as well? Probably not. Will they be okay keeping him and letting him go for a third round comp pick instead of maybe a first round pick? Who knows? And I guess that's what we're going to find out if they want to be go all in next year and, and risk losing draft compensation, or if they want to get something back for him uh, and cash in now and then try to sign somebody else and, and see if they can still compete in, in that sense. So if T Higgins is available, you absolutely have to make that phone call. And he is a player. Like you said, he's young, 23, 24 years old, just going to be entering his prime in the next couple seasons, lock him up long-term, get him here and get Mac a big body, number one receiver. And then you can find, I mean, how often have we found successful slot receivers? Jacoby was what undrafted. Yep. Just, just another success story from a, a undrafted or late round slot guy. So we can find those. We can find another one of those guys to fit in this offense. What we have had real troubles finding is big body dominant number one outside receivers. So get the guy, trade for the known commodity, a young player that could be here for a long time who's dominant and you know he's good and we can find the slot guy somewhere else or maybe one of these other guys we could uh, sneak in here. I don't I don't think we'll be able to get T. Higgins and one of these other players, but if we could, that'd be spectacular for our offense. Yeah, it would be great. Let's throw it to real quick, um, longer video, but let's throw it to some honorable mentions. Um, Cole, I believe you have one that um, you possibly are looking at a little bit more than me, but would make sense, especially in the style of offense that New England's uh, had a history of running. Yeah, and just with some rumors that I heard about Vegas uh, shopping some of their their weapons, a guy like Hunter Renfro. I mean, before this past season, I know, and Jace, you might not want to admit it, but I know you were like this as well. When we saw him and Mac Jones at the Pro Bowl, before he was on his contract, everybody wanted Hunter Renfro to New England. All of a sudden, he's hurt, has a little bit of a down year uh, with a Raiders team that was horrendous, and now nobody wants him anymore. Hunter Renfro is one of the best slot receivers in the NFL. I get it. it. It may not be the flashy, sexy thing for this offense, but he is a good receiver. 27 years old, $13 million cap hit this year, and I think he's he's on a, what, three-year three, three year deal? Three more years after that, I think. So he's a, he's a solid receiver. He, he's, not, he's not my number one option. That's why he's not even in the top five here. He's an honorable mention. But if you got to settle for a guy and Jacoby leaves for a bigger price tag, bringing in a guy like Hunter Renfro wouldn't be a bad thing. That's not that bad of a price for a guy with his play style. If he can be healthy for a whole season, I think he'd be a good addition to this style of offense. Yeah, and I think the argument to this is it's what we agreed on before the show. We'll talk about it right here. But would you rather ha have Hunter Renfro and probably have to give up, you know, maybe a third or uh, some pick for him or just re-sign Jacoby for probably 14 Jacoby. or 15 million. Yeah. You probably just re-signed Jacoby because I don't see either of them being a wide receiver. Number one for this team. Now they're going to come in. And if you have a T Higgins or you have a Devonte Adams, like Vegas has and Renfro stays healthy, he's a great option. And we all know what Josh McDaniels can do with him. So he will put up the stats. And then if he comes to new England, Bill O'Brien can do things with him. But I, I, in my opinion, the situation happened to give up something his cap hit being similar to what I think Jacoby's will be around, maybe a little bit less. Just re-sign Jacoby, keep the guy in house, keep him here. Um, I, I I have more ties to Jacoby than Renfro. I love Renfro, but I think that you know keep Jacoby here if that's your option and that's all you can um, figure out. And then if this is the case, re-sign Jacoby and maybe look at a receiver in the first round. You know, it's not ideal. I'd rather have him trade for a receiver and go tackle round one. But if that's the case. Maybe you go sign two of the um, big tackles in for agency, you secure that position with veterans, and now you can take a young receiver instead of draft or trading for one of these guys. So it, it, it's a ton of different options here. Make sure you guys let us know down below what you think, who you'd like to see from this list, or maybe if there's someone else that you'd uh, think New England should consider to trade for, 
um, that you'd like a little bit more. But we appreciate the support. Again, like, subscribe, comment down below, share the podcast with friends, turn on the notification bell so every time we post or go live, you guys are notified. Um, and we will talk to you guys next time.